Greetings, two percenters. So what we're going to do today is a little different. I'm going to try to build some kind of contraption that I've got an idea in my mind. We'll kind of see how this goes. But we've got a 2001 Subaru Outback that is on the way here. I hope it makes it because it's got a little bit of a cooling system problem. The owner states that it loses coolant pretty regularly, maybe a couple cups a month or so. It's been doing this for actually months and he's never seen a drop of coolant anywhere. There's nothing that leaks out of the vehicle on his garage floor or anything like that. So he is a little bit worried, obviously, that it might be internal. We'll go ahead and take a look at it. And actually, I did. On my way home from work yesterday, I stopped by that evening. I brought a cooling system pressure tester that I have. And unfortunately, for reasons unbeknownst to me, and I've run into this on other Subarus, my Subaru adapter does not work, and it didn't work on his system. It just doesn't fit tight enough, and when you pump it up, it leaks past the system. I'll show you, actually. And uh, a little bit frustrating, because I totally forgot about that. And I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that, but the one thing I do know is I didn't have a way of testing his cooling system to see if there was a leak or anything. So unfortunately, he's got to drive by all the way to my house for the free diagnosis, where I've got to come up with some way of seeing if he's got a cooling system leak or at least ruling out everything else. So that's kind of the plan here. So he should be here pretty much any minute now. So I uh, just want to do a couple updates. One of them, we've got an update on that Jeep that we've been following along that Joe owns. So we'll tell you about that. And then also very important for all of you guys that are in countries that were unavailable for Schrodinger's box quantum mechanics, even after I fixed the problem, please stay tuned after this video for a special message for you guys. We're going to make it available even for countries that are not available. And I'll explain that at the end of the message. That'll be just for you guys. So first of all, uh, Joe's truck, you probably remember this Jeep from previous videos, had the fuel pump problems and everything. So the latest update with it, uh, since fixing his Jeep, he says it runs much better. Joe says he hasn't had any issues with the starting or the engine or performance. He says it runs better than ever. Another thing that we never brought up in that series, you might remember from the very first video, my talking about the Jeep having that kind of death wobble that a lot of them do. So so what I did was actually at no cost, I went ahead and replaced his track bar bushing, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, a major stabilizing component to hold the front suspension and the front differential to the frame of the car. And since tightening that up, the thing steers like a Formula One racer, runs great. Joe says that he loves his new Ferrari. And as a matter of fact, he was so confident in the car that he finally took, after two years of waiting because he didn't have reliable transportation to do it. He took his mom on a road trip to St. Louis. This is a picture of the Jeep in front of the St. Louis Arch. And he made it there and back with no problem whatsoever. So how about that? That's the best part about doing this stuff is making that kind of difference for people. So hopefully we won't see his Jeep again in the future. But if we do, we'll definitely make sure to take special care of it. Okay, I hear that guy pulling up to my driveway right now, so I'm going to go ahead and open the garage, and let's go ahead and take a look at this cooling system leak. Ugh, sorry about that. Don't mean to rub it in. Okay, so I would agree. Um, kind of smells like coolant a little bit, which uh, I'm hoping is just going to be an external leak, and this guy doesn't have a blown head gasket or anything, but uh, I'm going to agree that uh, this guy drove this car quite a bit to come up here to see me and I don't see any evidence of any live leak or anything. There's certainly nothing dripping from the car. So again, your, your most common causes for this actually, believe it or not, the radiator cap. But we want to definitely do a system pressure test and uh, again, we're going to really hope that this isn't like a blown head gasket or anything. But the best thing to do is just uh, obviously rule out the simplest and that would be a system leak. So let's go ahead and try my idea here. So I'm gonna, car was just driven, but I'm sure it's probably low. And yeah, it's not even hissing or anything. Um, again, a little bit indicative of a leak, no pressure built up, uh, the car just pulled in here. So let's see, yeah, it's really low. Um, one of the things that really helps on a leak test to go ahead and top off your system because it's all the less air pressure that you'll be having to pump up with your pressure tester. So we're gonna go ahead and top this off a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and try my idea. 
Okay, actually, I just wanted to go over and show you the problem because maybe some of you guys might be able to help me out here. But I've got my stant pressure tester pump here, uh, which, to be honest with you, I've been less than thrilled with. The pump's actually broken on me several times, and I've had to take it apart and fix it. But uh, we've got two adapters here out of my kit, and these do not come cheaply, mind you. But this here is supposed to be the adapter for this model. Again, this is, I believe, a 2001 Subaru Outback with a 2.5, it looks like. And the thing is, is that this absolutely does not fit on. This is a 12027 adapter, and I've also got kind of a similar looking adapter that I was hoping would work, and this one is a 12025, and neither of these work. But even if our experiment works today and we get to pressure test the system with my contraption, I still would like to have the right adapter for this car, and I don't see any others that would look like they would fit. And so if you guys know, I would appreciate you letting me know in the comments. Okay, so what I've got is a bunch of uh, rubber stoppers that I kind of got from the laboratory. And I'm going to find one that's going to go ahead and block this hole. Ooh, right there. Normally, when you would do a pressure test on this radiator, i, I got to think I've got some type of manufactured defect on this thing or something. I know this has got to be the right one, but... Anyway, um, well, I, I know it, it doesn't seal up on there, but basically we would go ahead and pump this thing up. But on some of these fittings here, we've got to clamp the overflow tube because, of course, there would just be opened atmosphere with the overflow tube. You'd never pump it up. If this thing's working properly, uh, this one should reach well past the overflow tube and it should pressurize the system. But anyway, what I'm thinking of doing is because... My idea is to go ahead and use this stopper right here that I found. Um, I'm going to drill a hole through it, and we're just going to put compressed air into the system. The problem is, unlike my pump, which of course has a pressure gauge on it, I'm not going to have a pressure gauge available here. So what I'm thinking of doing is um, I'm making sure that this doesn't go down so deep that it covers my overflow tube, and I'm going to hook some kind of gauge onto the overflow tube and kind of take advantage of it to make a pressure gauge out of it to make sure I don't overpressurize the system. Generally don't want to go you know, over 18 PSI generally on these systems. That would be more than enough to find a leak, incidentally. So let's go ahead and see what we can rig up here. Okay, phase one is complete. I've got a hole drilled through here. Let's go ahead and put this on, and that fits pretty snugly. And let's just make sure... Good. It still blows through here, so that means I can hook up a pressure gauge. Okay, I've got my pressure tester, which makes very, very few appearances on the channel, and actually very few appearances out of my toolbox. I think the, the only other real major use I found for this was on that video where I was doing the back pressure test on that Ford, if you remember. But other than that, I, I never use this. And actually, you know what? We've got a problem here. I've just noticed that the PSI only goes up to 10. We're going to definitely want to go beyond that. I'd like to get to 15 or 16. We'll just have to go ahead and try maybe a low pressure on this thing and see if we can induce the leak at under 10 PSI. All right, this actually fits on pretty snug, and with the relatively low PSI we're going to be starting with, I don't think I really need to clamp it. Let's see if we can get this in a position where we can see everything in the shot. Okay, perfect. Um, so now what I want to do, I want to go ahead and expose as much as I can of the cooling system here. So let's get this intake off so that I can see the radiator. Let's go ahead and try our little pressure tester and see if we can figure it out. This guy right here is a really handy gizmo to have, little nozzle that you can kind of seal up things. Use this a lot for flushing out AC systems and hoses and things like that. So let's go ahead and hook that up. Okay, and what I'm going to do is uh, just, again, think in safety here, uh, more for the fact that I don't know for sure there's a leak here and I don't want to blow something up here. My air compressor set at like 110 or so. I'm going to go ahead and dial that down to maybe like 30 or so just to kind of be a little safer here. Okay, hopefully you guys see the gauge there. We're going to go ahead and give it a go. Yeah, it's a lot better. Oh, check that out. That works awesome. And uh, look, we have a leak just right here. Well, that was a little anticlimactic maybe, but this thing worked awesome. Okay, we'll get you a view of the leak right here. How about that? Okay, let's try that again with the gauge in play here. And uh, 
Oh, nice. That's awesome. So uh, I got to honestly tell you, I actually like this better than my stamp tester. And not just because I kind of came up with this thing, uh, but it's, it's actually, I think, a lot better. That's really cool. So um, if you've guys got a air compressor at your house, well, it's nothing for you to go ahead and set up a system like this at a fraction of the investment for a actual cooling system pressure tester kit. And as long as you got a cork that'll fit over, this works out really good. So that was pretty awesome. And my apologies, by the way, for the relatively anticlimactic end to the video there. I honestly thought that it wasn't going to be just some simple cooling system leak based on the description of the symptoms and everything. I thought we were going to have to do a much more involved cooling system diagnostic. To be honest with you, I'm kind of happy that that's not the case for this guy because if this were anything worse than a bad radiator, he'd really have a hard time financially with it. So actually, uh, since everybody benefited from this, and I know I definitely did, I love this. I'm going to use this all the time. I'm going to consider that compensation for replacing his radiator. So I'm just going to go charge him for the cost of the radiator and we'll just call it even there. All right. Well, I hope that that's going to help you out. Remember, you probably can do fine rigging up a bicycle pump even to make your own pressure tester like that. The other thing is besides testing for leaks, those pressure testers are awesome for burping a cooling system. So if you flush a cooling system and refill it, you know, normally you'd have to heat the engine up all the way, let it cool down all the way, top it off, use bleed screws, whatever. But if you use the pressure tester and put pressure into the system, you'll burp the system, fill it up after one attempt, and it's a lot quicker. But anyway, for you guys in other countries, and especially for all you guys in other countries, and this is just for you guys, everybody else, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. You can go. But for you guys in other countries, one thing I've learned in the last couple of days, you guys are the most loyal viewers, and it's just an amazing thing uh, seeing a lot of your comments and reactions to not being available for the Schrodinger's Box Quantum Mechanics channel. And I got to tell you, I feel terrible about the fact that you guys don't have an opportunity to see that material. So here's what we're going to do. What I need you to do is either click on Schrodinger the Cat in the corner of your screen or click on anywhere that you see my name on a comment or under the video to get to my homepage. Go to the About tab. When you get to the About tab, go to Send Message. I want you to send a message to me. This will be a personal message, like an email, with your country of origin and your email address. And all you got to do is just do that. I will make access to those videos available to you. That's all I'm going to say about it. So please go ahead and do that, and I will get back to you. Give me a few days to kind of compile all the people that are in those countries. But get back to me. I've got an arrangement for you guys where you'll be able to see the material. So that's all I wanted to say. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And if you make a pressure tester out of your own bicycle pump or whatever, let me know about it. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks. Bye.